Hi, I'm Cheryl. And I'm Maria. And welcome, welcome to, to the, the Sewing Room, room channel. channel. Well, today we are going to show you how to make a gorgeous fall tablescape using some scrap fabrics that was inspired from this jelly roll table runner. Now there is a tutorial on this, so make sure you look for the link below so you can make this table runner. So I had two jelly rolls that I used in it, but I had some pieces left over, so I decided to incorporate them into this tablescape. So we're gonna show you how to make a rag garland using the scraps plus a few other items. I'll also show you how to make a really easy centerpiece and also a few other items that are thrown in there in which we use the scraps to kind of enhance them just a little bit. So let's get started on the rag garland. Let's go over the supplies that you're going to need to make the rag garland. There's just three things that you need. The first is hemp twine. We purchased ours at Walmart. You're also going to need some beads. We're using wood beads. Again, these were also purchased at Walmart. And scrap fabric. Now our garland, we're gonna make about three yards long and you'll roughly need about half a yard's worth of fabric, give or take. You might wind up with some left over. The first step is you're gonna need to take your hemp twine and tie a knot at the end. And the reason for tying the knot at the end is so that all of your beads don't slip off. So now I'll show you how to cut the fabric. If you're not using the jelly roll strips, then cut strips of fabric about one and a quarter inch wide. If you're using the jelly roll strips, we're gonna cut them down. And I've stacked my jelly roll strips just to make it a pro the process go faster. So I've got them stacked and I'm going to just cut this in straight and then go over every five and a half inches and do a cut. So you're going to make them five and a half inches long and you want to just keep going over every five and a half inches or so. One, two, three, four, five and cut. Then I like to just take them all. Now this can be just a rough cut. Don't worry about making them super even and just I just go right down the center and be careful you keep your fingers out of the way and cut. So they wind up being about a one and a quarter inch and when you're done you just have all these random pieces here. So the first step you're going to take your hemp twine and you want to start with the side that doesn't have the knot on it and first start with stringing the beads on. Now we used about four beads to start and then four pieces of fabric. So you're gonna take your scrap fabric and fold it in half and just finger press. And you're going to tie the fabric onto the twine, just a single knot and slide down and use about four pieces of fabric and you're just gonna alternate. Four beads, four pieces of fabric, four beads, four pieces of fabric and keep going all the way till you get to the end. Once you get to the end of your garland, you're gonna end it by tying a knot on. Now, when you're all done, this is what the finished product will look like. Now, wasn't that super easy, so fun, it's gorgeous and festive, perfect for the fall season. When I was in Dollar Tree, I thought these were so cute, and they're little owls and scarecrow, but when you buy them, there's nothing on the bottom so that they'll stand up straight. Some of them stood up okay, others just flopped over. So in order to get them to stand up straight, I put this little base on it and it's very decor decorative and really easy to do. So let me show you how to do this. Start out with a thin piece of cardboard. This is cardstock that I purchased from 
Uh, I think it was from Walmart. You can get it at Walgreens. You can even go to an office supply store. But just look for any thin cardboard and take something round. Mine is a four inch template here. And these templates I bought at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. They're called June Taylor templates. And you get about five different templates in a pack. So this one's four inches. So draw around it and then cut it out so that you have this circle piece right here. We're gonna create something called a yo-yo. So for those of you who do quilting, you're probably familiar with a yo-yo. So it's really simple to make. So because my template is, my little circle cardboard template was four inches, you need to double that and cut a square of fabric out that's eight inches. So if your circle you've created is bigger, then double that size. After you've cut your square out, fold it in half and just do a little finger press. And then fold it in half again and do another finger press along here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Take a ruler and we're going to mark, place little marks where that four inch line is. So place the corner up into the corner of your fabric and we're gonna draw a little circle on here. So just keep drawing. So you move the ruler a little bit, put a mark at the four inch and you just keep doing this. So just make sure that this point up here at the top is right there in that corner and you just keep going around. We're almost there, uh, almost till you get there to the other side. Then either take a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter. I like my rotary cutter. So now you're just gonna cut right on those dotted marks that you put there. And then when you're done, you have a circle. Take a needle and thread and make sure you tie a knot in one end of the thread. That with your needle, you're gonna go about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge and just go in and out all the way around the edge. Here is the front side of my fabric. So you wanna make sure the back of your fabric is facing up. Take your cardboard template and place it in the middle, as close to the center as you can. And then slowly begin to pull on this, gathering it all up. So that it looks like this. Then to keep it all in place, hopefully you've left your needle on your thread, you're just gonna go across like this a few times to hold it all together. So just keep doing that. I lost the end of my thread. Hold on a second and I'll be there with y'all. Okay, and then I'm gonna go across this way a couple of times just to hold it together until you can get all of your items glued on. So then tie it in a lot one more time here and then cut your thread and then you're done with this part. I'm going to use a hot glue gun to glue these little fall leaves on there. I'm only gonna use two. You could use as many as you want and I want them to where they're about like this, where they hang out a little bit over the edge. So using a hot glue gun, and this I got at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts, and I think it was under $9. So just go ahead and put a blob of glue around here. Okay, you don't have to be super neat. And just press them down, lay the other one on there, and press it down. Then, if you don't have enough, you can, which I don't, I'm gonna stick just another little bit underneath here. There we go. Now to glue this on, you're gonna put another blob of glue 
all around. And this is a really small glue gun, so it the glue sticks aren't all that big, but it it works. I don't use a glue gun very often. So then just put it on there and hold it for a moment for the glue to adhere, and then you're done. Isn't that cute? Now I'm going to show you how we made these really easy decorative candles. Now, first thing that I do want to say, if you are choosing to decorate your candles, we recommend that for safety purposes, you don't light them. If you want to have candles that have a lit look, there are electronic candles that you can buy that are battery operated with a switch on the bottom. But for our candles, we are using ones that are real. Um, we purchased these at Walmart. And what we did was we took leftover fabric from our Jelly Roll Table Runner. Now our piece wasn't quite long enough to fit around the entire candle. So what we did was we took two pieces and we stitched them together in the back, then tied the strip of fabric around the candle into this really pretty bow. Now, isn't that easy? This is going to be the centerpiece. Isn't this beautiful? This was really simple and quick to do. This is a tin can, like a milk, uh, what do you call it? Milk jug. Milk jug. Milk canister. Okay. And it was in the um, old craft section in Walmart. Now remember, not all Walmart stores, unfortunately, carry uh, fabric and craft items. But you'll find these in a lot of them. So this was the main centerpiece base. The foliage up here, the straw looking stuff, was purchased also from Walmart in the craft section. And the berries is from the Dollar Tree store. And then the fabric is just a four inch wide piece of scrap fabric that we tied around the top of the, can the canister in a really pretty bow. Now, we're going to take all of these items that you've seen and we're going to go out to my dining room and create a tablescape. We're not sure what we're going to do with it all, so you're going to see us all in there just winging it and putting something together. That was fun. This is a project that the whole family can be involved in, and I hope you enjoy it as much as we did. Remember, follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thanks for watching and happy sewing! I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell and enter your email address so you receive email notifications about my latest videos. I'm Cheryl and this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing!